Good morning, everybody. I tell you, I can't even express how much that day off that I took yesterday rejuvenated me. I mean, I just feel great today. I feel full of energy, and it's exactly what I needed. Certainly, the circumstances that caused me to take the day off was, was horrible, but nevertheless, I, I think I needed one day to kind of shut it down and, and just have a good time. And of course, I was able to do some things that I've really been wanting to do for a while. Just kind of get into the city, do some exploration, and just go wherever my heart felt I should take me. Rather than having this like, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. I just kind of woke up and said, what am I going to do today? And, uh, and I did it. And it was awesome. First business of the day, I've got to feed Karma. Uh, that thing eats constantly and it's, uh, it's actually looking a little bit thin, so I'm gonna have to up it even more. I think I'm gonna get some super worms and some roaches for it too, because feeding it tons of crickets and it still just looks a little thin. So uh, regardless, I'm gonna feed it more crickets right now, but uh, next week, I'm gonna get it some different food. <laughs> Eat them all. See you in a bit. All right, so karma is set. Just checking the rest of the snakes down here. See what's going on. I let him out a little bit earlier when I got in. And uh, let's go see. I, I bet you I know exactly where he's at. He was he was actually right over here about an hour ago. But uh, let's see here. RJ. Where are you at, RJ? Oh, look at where he's at. You guys knew where this was gonna be, right? Hey, RJ. Hey, bud. What are you doing over here in your favorite spot? <laughs> hey, he loves that over there. I don't know what it is why he loves that spot so much, but he's always just, he's always over there every time I let him out. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna be here for a little while, so. I am going to uh, just let him roam around and have a good time and hang out in his favorite spot. Yeah, you know, I haven't really talked about skinks much lately, but I'm still as passionate as I've ever been about them. Uh, just for whatever reason, I just haven't really spoken about them too much. And one of the things I'm kind of excited about are these guys here. Of course, I've showed you these guys before, but these are the Centralian or the Multifasciata. These are uh, again from the central part of Australia, and I have th and I have three females that I got from uh, uh, Bill Brandt, who got them from Joe Lewis with, from Rare Earth, and uh, they, I believe they were produced back in 2001 or 2002. But unfortunately, there's only three females, no males, and you're not going to have a lot of success when you're trying to breed three females together. Well, fortunately, I do have a guy over in Europe that I've just gotten in contact with that actually has a male, and, and I believe he actually has uh, some animals that came from the same litter as these guys, but, but the male, of course, is not. It's unrelated. So I think I'm gonna end up sending this little girl over to Europe in exchange for the male, and uh, hopefully I can have success breeding multifasciata or Centralian blue chung skinks this year. So I'm pretty excited about it. But again, uh, I won't get that animal probably until December, but it gives me a pretty cool opportunity to produce something that, uh, that very few people have ever produced. Uh, there's only been one or two litters ever in America. So uh, pretty excited about that. But, but so anyway, so skinks are coming up to the end of their cycle and they're, uh, they're gonna start to hibernate pretty soon. So, so we're still feeding them and keeping them going, but, uh, but they're gonna be kinda going off of food pretty soon. And then they go down to cool down. We actually cool them down to about 65 degrees and we'll cool them down for about two months or so. And that really sparks them into, and, and basically, let me back up for a second. So basically what you do is you, you clean them out so their system is empty, you cool them down for a couple months, you bring them up, and then the females will typically shed, and then shortly thereafter the males will shed, and when they both shed, they typically will breed, and hopefully, with any luck, we'll have a bunch of little baby skinks again. You know, we produced some stuff last year, but, uh, um, and just take a look. This is, this is the setup that we use. You can see they have like all of this 
this Timothy hay here to kind of hide in and forage in. And uh, and they do really well. And I know that there are some people that be like, I can't believe you don't have lights in those cages. I don't know, guys. I mean, I'm just doing what other people have been doing successfully with skinks. Maybe they need lights. I don't know. But I don't want to complain about it or argue about it right now. Um, let's see. We did have... These are some of the babies from... Remember I produced a whole bunch of babies this year? Well, these are some of those babies. Remember, they were little teeny tiny guys. And now, they're getting pretty big. Where are you at? You're in here somewhere. Oh, cannot find the little monkey. He's not under there. He's got to be... Ah, oh, there he is. Look at how big these guys are getting, huh? I mean, they look so good. And look at that. That's actually was a, a sunset to a sunrise so look at the color starting to come out in that guy now i mean that's just really amazing uh here's another one uh next to it over here let's see where's this little guy there he is hello look at the beautiful yellow in that one huh and look at how big they're getting i mean they're just really beautiful animals so anyways uh i just didn't want you guys to think that because i haven't been talking about Sometimes I point the cameras in the weirdest directions. I just didn't want you guys to think that because I haven't been talking about uh, skinks as much that I'm still not just as passionate and excited about it because I really am. Uh, this year should be a really exciting year for us. Uh, take a look at that guy there. Look at how beautiful that is, huh? This is one of our up and coming breeders for this coming season. So uh, looking just absolutely fantastic. But uh, I still think, and I've said this a bunch of times that you know, for you reptile geeks out there, that uh, I really do believe that they're the future of the reptile short-term hobby. I think that they're going to be the next really big popular thing. But uh, again, that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, well, I'm just geeking out on reptiles for you here. And I know that, uh, you know, usually this vlog will go on like things I'm doing, adventures and so like that. Today, I'm, I'm just going to spend a little time just kind of geeking out on reptiles. I hope you guys, are you guys okay with that? I mean, you, you cool with me just being kind of a reptile geek for a minute? But take a look at this little girl here. I mean, look at that animal. Look at how gorgeous that thing is. This is actually a yellow tail. Look at that yellow tail. This is a yellow tail Kribo. So it's much like Maya. It's a Kribo, but uh, this is the yellow tail as, a, as opposed to the black tail. But I mean, just take a look at that one. I mean, I just cannot get over how yellow that tail is and how gorgeous it looks. So she's beefing up and hopefully with any success we'll have uh we'll have her go this this coming up year and this is one of our black tail babies from a couple years ago that is finally just getting about to the size of uh being able to breed this year look at that so again that was one of a baby from two years ago so uh with any luck this is a, a female whoa this is a female she's not really big but she's getting close uh to the right size and i tell you they are a handful come on girl get this back in here Look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. Look at that. <laughs> what are you doing, silly? Look at that face. I just love the markings on their face. I mean, they're just so pretty. And uh, and again, you know, with any like, oh, wait, where are you going? Don't go away. Don't, don't run away from me. Ah. Okay. They are uh, definitely full of energy. Oh, there she goes again. Full of energy, these snakes. Okay. Okay. Oh, sheesh. Do you see this, guys? She will not cooperate with me. And they're so smart, she keeps going to that same spot. Oh, I finally got her in. <laughs> That's a cool snake, isn't it? We're almost ready for python breeding season. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've got to bring, uh, I've got to set up a clutch. I brought a couple clutches over today that just hatched, so I'll set them up in a few. But uh, I'm actually ready to start breeding. I mean, we're going to have males and females together within two weeks. Two weeks tops. A lot of people have already started breeding. I'm just a little behind. I usually do it right around Thanksgiving area is usually when I get them together. End of November. Sometimes middle of November. Just depends on, on where, where things go. But uh, this year, a little bit behind. But we will have males and females together uh, within two weeks. Of course, and it's not just ball pythons. It's all the pythons and boas that we'll be breeding here uh, within the next couple weeks. So we have a lot to... Uh, to go we do still have this girl here that's gravid which is a het leucistic um rainbow boa bred to a leucistic so hopefully with any luck she'll have good babies and some white ones so
You, you know, earlier I was telling you about how I got away, and you guys, if you didn't watch it, you can watch yesterday's vlog where I kind of just took off and, you know, I did some urban exploration, saw some cool buildings, went downtown, just kind of hung out, chilled out. And then actually last night, which I didn't put in the vlog, me and Lori went to a wedding, which was really a lot of fun. Um, it, it, we had a great time. It, it, regardless, I, I was able to get away and kind of just decompress you know what I mean so so you guys tell me like what do you guys do when you want to get away I mean if you go out and sit up in a tree stand do you go driving cars do you go pet shop hopping do you go to the movies you know what is it I mean what is it for you that works when life is getting to you and you're just kind of like oh, I can't take it and you get away for me maybe you know as a matter of fact it was funny because originally I was going to stay home and just like watch movies all day and and I, you guys, if you watched yesterday you saw it, I tried to relax, I couldn't do it and then next thing you know I was cruising around getting myself into very unusually precarious positions and so regardless, let me know what you guys do down here uh, to get away and get your mind off of things. Maybe, maybe I'll take your advice and I'll do what you guys do or at least give it a try, right? Okay, so my work is wrapped up uh, here and I need to go do a couple other things, but I don't want to leave RJ just kind of running loose down, you know, it, that would probably be a bad thing. So uh, let's go ahead. I, I'm, I'm curious if you guys ever wonder what it's like for me to get him and put him back home. Uh, so I'm going to share that with you right now. There you have it, RJ's back in his tub. So guys, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. It's a beautiful day, so I'm gonna head home, spend a little time with the family, and then I'll be back to finish up my snake work. But you know, we're a couple weeks into November now, and you guys overwhelmingly told told me to grow this right here. So uh, I, I'm a couple weeks, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Oh. So Lori, what did you think of my beard so far? It's coming in nicely. Okay guys, I'm back at it, back to the shop. And uh, remember I told you earlier that I had some clutches of eggs hatching. In actuality, what happened was I only had three clutches left to hatch and I have all three clutches hatched now. So this is a really bittersweet time. You know, basically, you know, it's great to kind of be done hatching in a way but at the other time, it's kind of a bummer because there's no more eggs left to hatch. I've got a couple gravid female live bearers that could have babies. But other than that, I'm pretty much done producing snakes for 2016. The good news is we're starting to breed snakes for 2017 already. So although there'll be several, you know, four or five months with no babies, it's okay. I mean, you know, it, again, it's a bittersweet. So let me show you what I ended up hatching out so far. So uh, let me just set this camera down like this and I'll kind of... Uh, show you what I have. So this clutch was pretty cool. This was actually, you, you can see here, this is just an Enchi. Right there. That's an Enchi. You know, it's really pretty. Uh, this happens to be an Enchi banana, which is also extremely pretty. Take a look at that. Here, I'll get a little bit better look at it for you guys. So that is an Enchi banana right there. Come on, focus. There it is. And then uh, this happens to be a cinnamon pinstripe enchi. So that's pretty cool. This is just a, a banana pinstripe. And then, of course, this is the, the best as far as mutations go. I mean, not the best animal, but just mutation-wise. And that is actually a cinnamon pinstripe banana enchi. So that's all four genes mixed in there. So it's a nice little clutch there for sure. I was really happy with that. Uh, this next one is actually, let's see here. We've got some pretty cool stuff. Obviously this one's really beautiful. But this is uh, actually 
a spinner het russo so the het russo are they also call them lemons and uh they're het for white animals here this is just a, a pastel ball python really pretty little animal uh this would be a spinner which is of course the pinstripe and spider mixed and of course that one was the pinstripe spider and then the hat russo and then this one is really pretty here this is actually a pastel kingspin so uh so yeah it's just you know again it's pastel it's lesser it's spider and it's pinstripe so that one is really gorgeous isn't it that that's a neat animal here and then the last clutch of the year and all done after that is of course a normal ball python here uh a enchi banana here it's really pretty and then another enchi banana here so really beautiful animal so uh, again you know it's one of those things that uh it, again it's bittersweet you know what i mean it's it's uh it's good and bad i, I love the fact that yeah, I could shut the incubator down, take a break from hatching, not having to set up babies, having to get them to eat. But at the same time, it's so exciting to hatch baby snakes. So uh, anyways, I got to set these guys up. I'm not really sure what this snake is doing. I've never seen this before. I tell you what, seriously, you know, I think that when it comes to um, being successful, and that's something that people ask me all the time, you know, they think, you know, hey, you've been successful in breeding snakes, you've been successful with YouTube for the most part, and, and a lot of times people will ask me questions like, how do I become successful like that? Uh, and, and listen, I don't necessarily know that I would consider myself, you know, I, my level, like there's never, like I'm always thinking that I could be more successful, you know, and, and it's not about, money or fame or it's just about achieving things but anyways the point is the reason i want to talk to you is you know being successful is about doing the work and what i mean by that is everybody wants the benefits of success whether that's you know notoriety money uh achievement but the truth is is to get successful what you need to do is love the work that gets you successful right so my, my point is if you want to be a successful snake breeder let's say you have to love this you have to love setting snakes up you have to love feeding them you have to love cleaning them you have to love doing the things that aren't glamorous because then if you love hatching the snakes and seeing baby snakes and maybe selling them so that you can make some money or buy some other whatever the, whatever your end goal is the success is certainly the end goal but you've got to enjoy the work along the way to really be successful because if you don't enjoy the work you're not going to do it well and it's you're not going to it's not going to equate to success does that make sense or let's say youtube you know you may love the thought of like having you know hundreds or thousands of comments on youtube or getting millions of views on youtube and being successful and all the things that come but but the truth is you've got to love this what i'm doing right now which is making the content you know filming it thinking of ideas thinking of you've got to love that part and then maybe you'll be successful. You might not be, but if you don't love it, you definitely aren't going to be successful. Does that make sense? So my point is love the work because the work will create success. You know, on that point, I wanted to say also that, you know, I really do believe in that saying that enjoy the journey, not the destination. It's so true because the truth is a lot of times the destination isn't as spectacular as it was in your head you know you think oh my god if i could just reach this level of success or i could do this and then you get there and you realize that maybe it wasn't all that you thought it was going to be so you better enjoy the ride because the ride is really the most important part of your journey you know to be honest with you uh you know i enjoy every aspect of all the things i do because i realize that that way if i'm not if i don't reach the level of success that i'm hoping i do at least I've enjoyed the, the journey trying to get there. And then if I do enjoy that journey and do achieve that success, it makes it all the more just rich and, and, and great. So see what I'm saying? Enjoy the little things. Do what you love. And then all the rest will take care of itself. You know, a lot of times I get real philosophical with you guys and share my kind of beliefs on life and all these other things. And I'm kind of curious sometimes, do you guys like that? Or do you, are you just like, shut up, Brian, just show us some cool animals. You yeah, obviously the vlog isn't snake bites and, and this is about my life, but I'm also sharing my ideology and trying to inspire you, whether it through curiosity or, or just work hard or whatever the case may be. And I'm curious, should I 
not do that as much, you know, go ahead and hit me down below in the comments and let me know what you think. Do you like that part of the, sh the vlog or do you wish that I'd just shut up and show you cool things?